100,000 years ago, up to a million humans roamed the Earth. And yet, about 70,000 years ago, a population of just a few thousand people may have given rise to all modern humans. Something happened. Something big. Something that changed the course of human development. How did this happen? Geneticists estimate that human evolution started about six million years ago, when the DNA of chimps and our species first separated. There are more than six billion people alive in the world today. Humans have adapted to the different conditions across the planet by developing a wide variety of different physical characteristics. We come in a huge range of colors, shapes and sizes. But the really interesting thing is not how different we appear on the surface, but how similar we all are underneath. Professor Todd Dissatel of New York University studies DNA, a kind of human barcode for our inherited physical characteristics. It turns out there is a difference of only about one-tenth of one percent in the genetic information held in the DNA molecule between any two people, however different they may look, and wherever in the world they originally come from. We all have more in common with each other than we might have thought. I find it absolutely fascinating how little genetic diversity there are amongst people throughout the world. You see people with different skin color, head shapes, hair types, and all of those things. Those differences seem to really be skin deep when we get down to the genetics. In fact, there is less variation in the DNA of all of the people alive on the planet today than exists in just one troop of chimpanzees in West Africa. The small genetic diversity in our huge population may tell us something important about our prehistoric past. That something happened to erase most of the human DNA record. Something that could have decimated the numbers of our ancestors. It's called a genetic bottleneck, a population collapse that wipes out much of the DNA record. Nowadays, they're commonly seen in endangered species. It's like what happens if you shake a range of colored balls out of a glass container. Here I have a large variable population represented by the five different colored gumballs. If this population shrinks by going through what we call a genetic bottleneck, here actually represented by a real bottle, I end up with a smaller pool with less genetic diversity. The human DNA record suggests that something may have driven our ancestors to the brink of extinction. The evidence in our genes may also tell us when this happened and how many prehistoric survivors made it through the genetic bottleneck. Scientists can estimate the size of human population from the past using mitochondria a sort of cellular battery pack that has its own DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is only inherited from the mother and does not combine with genetic information from the father. So, starting with the total range of these genes identified in our modern population, scientists can track back along the exclusively female line and estimate the number of childbearing women in the population of earlier generations. And the DNA that is passed to a child is not always a perfect copy of the parental DNA. It's a bit like photocopying a photograph and then photocopying the copy over and over again. Each imperfection carries forward to all the subsequent copies and over time the picture can change significantly. So this is how I mutate after 20 generations of photocopying.
by looking at the pattern of mitochondrial mutations that we see on the planet today and using the known mutation rate of mitochondria, I can estimate that between 50 and 100,000 years ago, there was only a few thousand individuals that gave rise to the populations that we see on the planet today. If Dissertel is correct, then we all owe our existence to these few thousand survivors. Yet there may have been as many as a million prehistoric people alive before the start of the genetic bottleneck. Stone tools from more than a hundred thousand years ago have been found as far apart as northern Europe and China. But how far had our species developed by this time? Were any of these creatures really human? The super eruption 75,000 years ago caused a terrible volcanic winter that laid vegetation across the planet to waste. This could have decimated most modern human populations. But there were survivors, and it is their descendants who went on to make the world we know today. So who were these people? Geneticists can trace the movement of early humans by comparing DNA variations in different parts of the world. The region with the greatest genetic diversity is the most likely source of populations with more limited DNA variation. Professor Todd Dissertel of New York University compares this to a deck of cards. If I take a full deck of cards and I shuffle it and then I deal them out, There'll be hearts, there'll be clubs, there'll be spades, there'll be diamonds. Then if I only take a small group of cards, let's say they're all red, no matter how often I shuffle them, all of the hands that I deal will always be red. So the greatest diversity we'll ever find is always from the founding population, in this case, the full deck of cards. This pinpoints the most likely source of modern humanity to the region with the greatest genetic diversity, East Africa. In fact, there is likely to be more difference between the DNA of two neighbors in one village in East Africa than between a person of Southeast Asian descent and a person of Northern European descent. The diversity that we see basically around the planet seems to be traced back to East Africa. Many experts believe that our entire six billion population came from a band of only a few thousand people from East Africa about 60,000 years ago. But there is archaeological evidence of up to a million humans living across much of the globe tens of thousands of years earlier. Something seems to have happened to halt human development across most of the inhabited world in a kind of prehistoric game of risk. The Toba super eruption 75,000 years ago caused a devastating global volcanic winter. A small band of East African survivors of this apocalyptic natural disaster may have sustained the entire human race.